just got three uh, brand new JS's. I'm so excited. This one's a forget-me-not. Uh, this one's a schooner. And underneath is a monster. Let's talk about the category of surfboard known as HPSB, high performance surfboards. Its name is a little misleading because it insinuates that other categories of board, for instance, an everyday surfboard or a mid-length, can't achieve high performance, which is incorrect. But what one could argue is that an HPSB allows for the highest performance possible out of all categories. And this is for a few reasons. Number one, HPSBs are generally quite refined and knifey. Spot the pulled in tail, the tight nose and thin rails. This encourages the board to sit in the water more, thus allowing for a high degree of critical control. Number two, they're built for harnessing speed more than generating speed, which essentially means they're built for good waves with lots of power to give. Number three, they have fairly intense rockers, which allows them to fit into critical parts of a wave without nose diving. Simply put, high performance shortboards offer unparalleled levels of control for the surfer, which allows them to push really hard with their performance without fear of losing that control, a la ultra high performance surfing. For me, I've always resented the transition from an everyday style surfboard to an HPSB because it's simply not as easy of an experience. In other words, HPSBs come at a cost. To achieve a high level of control, a certain degree of speed is sacrificed, which has two main implications for those purchasing. Number one, you need to have adequate speed generating skills. Number two, you probably need to surf advanced type waves with lots of power. When the waves get solid, my everyday board just doesn't cut it. It doesn't allow me to control the speed that I have. And these days, because I'm surfing and traveling a lot more, I'm actually finding myself out in solid conditions way more frequently. A high performance surfboard is probably the most difficult category of board to fill in your quiver, but it's the one I want to tick off today. I've only got space for one board to take away with me for the next six month worldwide journey. So I need to go to some good waves and decide which one. Can't wait. I'm just gonna start off with the neutral template uh, in the black six, because I wanna feel out the board and then if I'm feeling like I want a little bit more drive or something, I'll flick to the to the raked fins and and go from there. It's actually pumping. It's just Mitchy and I, and we're gonna get all the ways to ourselves. It's not like big by any means. Like it's sizey enough, a little bit lumpy. It's the perfect conditions to try some more advanced shapes. So I'm frothing. First up off the rank is the Monster 10. So we'll rip into it now. are a little bit trickier than anticipated um, but the board feels like it's something I would really like uh, just tracking along the wave you can feel there's a lot of energy there's not much resistance in that rocker that concave so that felt really nice that does let, uh, lend itself more though I think towards waves a little bit smaller I couldn't find a lot of tight pockets but when I did eventually find, find one the board felt really forgiving, effortless. Like I went for that last layback and I actually thought I'd just bog rail because I wasn't going that fast and the board just kind of shot out and did its thing. So I'd actually put it closer towards, you know, the, the sharp eye or something that I've been riding a lot. Um, I'm gonna see if I can jump on the schooner with that really thin tail, if that sort of helps me deal with those bumps and backwash a little bit. And uh, hopefully it allows me to do some carves on the open face, we'll see.
that Kale? Cat? I think so. Yeah, that's yeah. Kale. He's got his hood off. Yeah, he's taking it off, hasn't he? Bit of a surprise, that was sick. As soon as the wave got cuppy, uh, it just held, so, it stuck to the face. Right in front of the back foot, there's part of the rail that is just digging in the water so nicely when the wave's cuppy, where you can literally push it as hard as you can uh, on a you know three to four foot cuffed out wave, which is literally what I'm after is a board that I can just push really hard against in good surf so that was really fun um, on the flat sections this board doesn't uh, it's not as alive as I want it to be um, but that comes with the territory like I'm not gonna be able to get a board that sits in the water like this does and I can push as hard as I can on a big wave and also uh, be really good on the flat parts so this is great. I'm really happy with that. The first wave I was worried I sort of came off awkwardly and it felt weird, but that was just so cool. So yeah, that's heat leader so far. Good wave board. Let's go find some more waves. board just felt so nice and just it fit in the wave it sat in the water so well and I literally pushed it pretty much as hard as I can I'm actually so exhausted from surfing and doing surfing that I haven't done in ages um, you know I didn't surf perfectly but I definitely found some sections where I could really let loose and god that board just like it just felt so good So tired. <laughs> ah, six hours in the water yesterday, probably even seven. Um, yeah, feeling it. Jumping back to my uh, ultimate surf fitness uh, mobility routines this morning to try and feel better. <laughs> Time to give the forget me not a go. Uh, we've come to a spot that's a little bit steeper, a little bit more critical because this board. Uh, apparently is a bit more of a step up, so I want to see how it goes. I might take the schooner down as well, whether I ride it or not, I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm going to put the uh, raked fins in this, just to see how that goes. was fun the board went really well uh, once I was on the wave I uh, felt like it just wanted to hold I feel like this board would be really good in six foot 
point break surf, you know, Kira or something like that. The only thing was trying to get under the slab and trying to sort of backdoor sections. I felt like there's too much rocker for me to paddle it easily. Um, paddling, I feel, is one of my weaknesses. So I think the the rocker there just kind of held me back a little bit. Um, I feel like when I was out in the water, I was sort of going, oh, I wish I had the schooner so I could just sort of roll over those um, little little steps and get in nice and early. Uh, so that was the only thing that was sort of holding me back. Once I was in the pocket though, this board felt really good, really reliable, I could go vertical. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing to complain about. So yeah, interesting session. <laughs> the surfboard I want to take away. This is the board that I want for slabs, for heavy waves, for tubes, for, for big waves so that I can get in nice and early. It's all about the paddle for me and it's got the hold. So I'm frothing on this board. It's so good. The other boards are great. The Monster particularly, really good short board. The Forget Me Not I can see working in, you know, big clean walls. But yeah, this is the one that I like, the Mikey Wright Schooner from JS and I want to take it away.